Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Linear Functions Lesson Number 6, Linear Piecewise Functions, Hope Review Number 5. In the case, uh, and this is just the fifth question. Every question has gotten a video because they require a lot of work. Hope you find these videos helpful. And I uh, hope you guys are uh, like and subscribe to the video if you if you do find it helpful. Leave comments, questions below in the comment section, and subscribe and turn on those notifications to know when new videos are added. Especially if I'm working in the middle of the night, uh, or I hope they'll wake you up while you're sleeping though. So, okay, all right. So here we go. Question number five: Find all x-intercepts of the function g of x, which is these three sections here, algebraically. It says justify your work by using by showing the algebra. Be sure to check your answers versus the domain intervals to make sure each solution is valid. <clears throat> well, so how do we do this now? Well, let's take a look. We have to figure out x-intercepts, and we know an x-intercept is going to be the value of x when y equals zero, or in this case, when the function equals zero. So I have uh, some steps here. Let's take a look. If you want to find the x-intercepts for a piecewise function, set each function equal to zero and solve for x. This makes sense because you basically want to find the values of x that make the function equal to zero. But after we do that, determine if that value is part of that function's domain, meaning based upon the, the domain interval, is the value of x you found, can it be found inside that domain interval? If it is, then we keep that x-intercept. But if that x value we found is not part of the domain interval, then we have to reject it. Okay, so for solve for, we, and we'll go over these, was a solve for, solve for x by setting each of those functions equal zero, and then check if, if those x values we found belong in the domain intervals. If, again, if, we, if they do, then we have our nx intercepts because we have more than one possibly. If it did not, well, I'll reject it though. So let's begin with the first one. Our first function here is going to be 2x plus 8 in the interval of negative 5 is less than x is less than negative 1. So we set 2x plus 8 equal to 0. We'll subtract 8 on both sides. 2x equals negative 8. Divide by 2, x is equal to negative 4. Okay, so x equals negative 4. Now we check in here, negative 4. Does that belong? Well, negative 4 can be found in the interval between negative 5 and 1. So yes, we're going to keep this one. So we're gonna, this is a keeper. Let's now take a look at the next function. So we can set negative one half, x minus four equal to zero. We add four to both sides. We have negative one half x is equal to positive four. We're gonna multiply both sides by negative two over one to get one x by itself. And we find x is equal to negative eight. Now we check, is negative 8 in this interval between negative 1 and 1? Fortunately, negative 8 is not. That will mean if we graph this, this piece of the function will not cross the x-axis. So unfortunately, this is going to be a reject. So we're going to reject this one. That's no good for us. Now let's go on to our last function here. We have negative 4x plus 10, and we set that equal to 0. We're going to, oops, not 10, sorry. It says 10 here, it should be 0. Sorry about that. So we track 10 on both sides. We have negative 4x is equal to neg 10. Divide both sides by neg 4. We're going to get x value of negative 5 over 2 or 2.5. So is 2.5 found in between 1 and 4? It most certainly is. So we see in this case, this will be kept. 
So we keep this one definitely. So what are our x value our x intercepts in this case? The x intercepts of this function. All right, and I'm gonna type this out. My handwriting is terrible. So what's up over here? So here we go. Ooh, that font's too big though. Let me use a smaller font. That was 24 look. Here we go. The x intercepts of the piecewise function g of x will be x equals neg 4 and x equals 2.5. Okay. I don't know if I should just do this. Yep. There you go. All right. And so we rejected, of course, x equals negative 8 because it didn't work out. So let me make this full page here. And so algebraically, again, we need to solve for each of the functions by setting them equal to 0, solve for x, and then we test and see if those x values are in the interval. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. All right? Uh, again, if you found this video helpful, we did these on, in class earlier, uh, and so hopefully it's pretty much the same thing. But in case you missed the class time, you know, this hopefully will be uh, helpful in being able to go over any questions you might have. Um, but yes, so if you also in this case, if you would like me to do videos that are maybe um, maybe a topical the topics that we haven't covered yet, that you know, definitely let me know in the comments, um, and this way I can maybe be, make make new videos or more videos that be helpful to any math questions you might have. We thank I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your your uh, I guess. Uh, be willing to learn math, and I hope that these are helpful to you guys. Okay, again, give the video a like, really appreciate it, and also uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already, turn notifications, and uh, I will see you in the next video when we move on to our next topic. All right, and that one's going to be pretty interesting as well, too. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and be safe.